Hi, welcome to One on One. I'm Steve Adubato, coming to you from the Agnes Farris NJTV studio. It's our pleasure to introduce Louis Major, distinguished professor of American studies and history at Rutgers University, who's interested in history, but he's fascinated by Bruce Springsteen. Yes, I am. That's great. Break it down. Here. By the way, this book is called Long Walk Home. Go ahead. Well, my interest in Springsteen started personal, and they became professional. Uh, I was 18 years old when I first saw Springsteen perform. Where? I actually saw him open for Chicago at Madison Square Garden. No. This is one of those shows that Springsteen himself disavows. He said it was one of the worst experiences of his <laughs> life. But I was on a date, and my date wanted to see Chicago, a very popular band at the time. And this guy comes out with his band blows me away. And what I like to say is my relationship with that girl didn't survive. My relationship with Springsteen has lasted more than 40 years. How many times, Sam? It, it has to be something like 200. So uh, I told you 20 and you were not impressed. <laughs> Are you serious? That's it? Yeah, exactly. The rookie. A rookie. I, I, listen, there are people, I went to, my wife and I saw Billy Joel recently at the Garden. Mm -hmm. You know, he's got that gig there. And the fans are loyal. But I've never, right. ever, seen anything, yeah. neither have you, and you know a lot better, than the loyalty to Springsteen. What is it based on? Well, part of it is he may be the greatest live performer in the history of rock and roll. Uh, and no two nights are the same, no two sets are the same. He understands that the performance is an art form in and of itself. And people who attend those shows go back night after night on the same stand because you feel change, you feel transformed. He delivers the original promise of rock and roll, right? Freedom, liberation. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he would at times go out on stage and say, anybody alive out there? And no matter what else is going on in your life, there's something about that feeling at a live show that people go back time and time okay, again. Okay, so let's, let's go through this. Yeah, now, obviously, sure. um, Springsteen works hard, works hard at taking care of himself. He's 70, just turned, as we're doing this, exactly. for 70 years of age. Exactly. Has he slowed down at all? I don't think so. Really? You know? I don't think so. I mean, Sure, some of the shows, you know, he doesn't necessarily do the knee slides, although the last time he toured, he was still crowd surfing uh, the audience. The other shows are still over three hours long. But more important, he hasn't slowed down as an artist. His life has been about his music. That's what got him started. While we now think of him as this iconic figure, and he is, he's a global superstar, it's about the work. And the work has continued, and he continues to do the work. And he does the work that he wants to do when he wants to do it. And the Broadway experience for him? I think it was amazing. Uh, I, I think it grew out of his autobiography, which was a remarkable literary Absolutely. work. Absolutely. Uh, it was a performance that was also about one of the themes of Springsteen's career, which is trust the art, not the artist. You know, he comes out in that show, he says, I'm a magician. I do magic tricks. And people constantly want to know who Springsteen is, but part of my work as a scholar is to understand what his work means and to unpack his work uh, regardless of who he is as a person. So you know what's interesting? In, in your book, Long Walk Home, a lot of talk about Springsteen's view of quote unquote the American dream and his comparison to the reality of America. Do you think from his music and his art that, that he is especially disappointed? It's not so much a question of disappointed, although certainly he's deeply concerned, as many people are, about the turn uh, that America has taken, oh, not only in the last few years, but since the recession. Uh, this book has a collection right, right, of essays. The collection, and yours right. is one of the essays. Correct. Mine right. is one of the essays, and the essay that I wrote about is called Springsteen's American Dream. You know, Springsteen has said that the body of his work has been devoted to judging the distance between American reality and the American dream. That's the arc, and it continues. It's changed over time, and part of what I do is explore how those things have changed. With your students in particular? Yeah, I teach a course this semester at Rutgers called Springsteen's American Vision. These are undergrads? These are undergrads. So I'm thinking about my time at Rutgers <laughs> um, as a graduate and doctoral student, and yeah. I'm thinking, A, we never had a course like this. <laughs> right. B, I'm more, more curious. Right. What kind of students you are attracting? These are 19, 20, 21 year olds. They're, they're Springsteen's all... gotten by 50 years. No, exactly. And the great thing is they're not necessarily Springsteen fans. I mean, because really? they're, their parents were Springsteen fans. Of course. And so, in some ways, they're taking it because they were brought up on Springsteen. In some cases, it's because it's New Jersey. But in some cases, because he's an iconic figure who one would study as one might study any other artist, be it a novelist or mm. a playwright or a, or a filmmaker, and that's how we approach it. Born to Run means what to you and well, to him? 
for me, Born to Run is the defining song of my life. You'll appreciate this. The first exercise I give the students week one is I have them write about a song that changed their life. Mm. Uh, and it doesn't have to literally For mine, it was Cats in the Cradle. There you go. I don't want to go into that right now. Okay. I'm so, I was going to ask you. <laughs> oh, I'm not going put, there. I didn't go want to put you on the spot. But it's a fabulous exercise because it forces them to think about how do you analyze music? What is a song? Uh, talk about the lyrics. Talk about the music. Why does the song have that power? And talk about American Dream, right? The opening line of Born to Run. Every day we sweat it out on the streets of the runaway American Dream. Uh, the runaway American dream is what Springsteen has been thinking about. That's where the escape was, the difference between day and evening. But he changes over time, so those early songs mm. were about liberation and about escape and about freedom become something else. Did you do this? Because there are some friends of mine who are big fans of Springsteen, his music, but they do not appreciate some of his politics. Right. And some of my friends, particularly my friends in the law enforcement community, will talk about 41 shots. I understand. Yeah. Yeah. But... It's also perhaps Excuse to me, do you misunderstand. Think he regrets, do you think he regrets doing 41 shots? Absolutely not. I don't think he regrets it at all. And, and, and sometimes people mishear or misunderstand, right? It's a song about the anxiety and the tension on both sides, on the policeman's side as well as the child's side. And while, yes, there are law enforcement officials who sort of were opposed to it, I think mm. Springsteen's political engagement has, has become more so over time. I mean, that, that's clear. The significance of the rising, September 11th. One of the profound creative responses to one of the great traumas right, in, in our country and in this area. And for him to be able to produce those songs in that way. And that's the thing about art. Mm -hmm. It has to transcend the moment, right? It can't just be a political song or a theme song or a protest song. And, and his music has done that. And certainly the rising did that. Now, Rosalita, it, that's just for fun, correct? It's There's no political fun. statement. There's <laughs> Well, right? it's, about, it's about love. It's well, about, how about romance. This? When it's about he escape. says to the, fa that yeah. the father's going to regret this. Yeah. Because that what did he do? Is that one of the vote? Because he just he signed the big contract, right? <laughs> he right. screwed the up. The old man screwed stuff. up. Yeah. But it's a bar it's song. It's a it's band the best. song. It's a dance song. And that's the other side of it. We can be serious, as we should be, about Springsteen and the music. And he's been serious. There are many different versions. But we can't forget the joy of the rock and roll dance. Deep question. Go ahead. If it were not for Springsteen, would we have ever had Courtney Cox? <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> Here, go ahead, Google it, check it out. Listen, uh, Louis, appreciate it. And by the way, Thanks this you brought this other here. book in as well? Yeah, that's a collection of his essential interviews that I co-edited with, uh, with Chris Phillips, who runs Backstreets. There's a lot of scholarship on Springsteen. I'm glad to be one of the many historians yeah. who are thinking about his work. Listen, we appreciate you joining us. Thanks well for done. having me. Thanks. Thank you so much. It's one on one. It's a great show because of people like this and books like that. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Are you ready to take your business to the next level? I'm Jose Lozano, President and CEO of Choose New Jersey, and I invite you to make history with us. From Tom Edison's light bulb to today's breakthrough in cancer research, New Jersey inspires innovators. We are home to the highest concentration of scientists and engineers and number two public school system in America. Discover New Jersey's inspiring, inclusive environment for companies of all sizes at ChooseNewJersey.com. Locate your company in the state of innovation. Also brought to you by the New Jersey Economic Development Authority, the law firm of Gibbons PC, Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, and by Keystone Mountain Lakes Regional Council of Carpenters. Your future is in our building.